the anthropic principle, as you stated, Richard, I think is a complete truism. Of course we have to be in such and such a kind of planet of the kind that we could appear on. That does not answer the question how we came to exist on it. And I fear I have to disagree with your Darwinism. Darwinism does not explain life. It may explain certain things about what happens when you've got life. But evolution uh, assuming, assumes the existence of a mutating replicator. It does not explain how that replicator came to exist in the first place. Now that's a major discussion. I want to address the who designed the designer question because it's the old schoolboy question, who created God? I, I'm actually very surprised to find it as a central argument in your book because it assumes that God is created. And I'm not surprised, therefore, that you call the book The God Delusion, because created gods are by definition a delusion. Now, I know, and I ought to explain, that Richard doesn't like people who say to him that they don't believe in the God he doesn't believe in. But I think that this is possibly touching a sore spot, because you leave yourself wide open to the charge. After all, you are arguing that God is a delusion. And in order to weigh your argument, I, I said that it is you who's arguing that God is a delusion. Oh, sorry. And in order to weigh that argument, I need to know what you mean by God. And if you say, if there is a God, you have to ask who created God, that means that you're reduced to thinking about created gods. Well, none of us believe in created gods, Jews, Muslims, or Christians. And I think that argument then is entirely by, beside the point, and you, perhaps you ought to put it on your shelf marked celestial teapots where it belongs. Three hundred churches have been destroyed. And just imagine that if one, two, five, ten were destroyed, but we're talking about 300 churches destroyed. The European Parliament accuses India's Hindu-led BJP government and its Prime Minister Narendra Modi of fueling the violence by pursuing, quote, politically motivated divisive policies promoting Hindu majoritarianism. The underlying issue here is that the central government, the BJP party led by Prime Minister Modi, has not reacted. He's been forced to make one comment, but even that was setting a context for why the violence was happening that ignored the violence against Christians. In Manipur's capital city, Hindu women creating roadblocks like this one to check cars for Christians. In May, a Hindu mob paraded naked two Christian women. One had been reportedly gang raped. Several videos on social media showed mobs also burning down churches. The perpetrators themselves are posting videos of mob attacks on churches. They're showing the churches being burned down. They literally show the police stepping aside to allow the, the mob to attack these Christian churches. As a result, Christians have lost complete trust in the Manipur police. This video showing dozens of Christian women kneeling, crying and begging Indian soldiers to stay in their village, fearful of more Hindu attacks. Fighting erupted in early May when the state government extended land, jobs and other benefits typically reserved for the minority Christians to the Hindus. The decision led to some of the worst fighting between the two biggest tribes in the state. Human rights and religious freedom experts accuse Modi's government of pushing a radical ideology that believes India is for Hindus only. Your dime, that's what the American Medical Association detailed in their June journal, making ethical arguments for the procedure. Our next guest says the AMA should focus on real medical crises, like the regret rate of children who undergo transitioning surgeries. Fox News medical contributor, Dr. Marty McCary joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. So what are your concerns after reading this article? 
Well, uh, first of all, we have been doing in medicine uterus transplants in patients who have no uterus at birth or had uterine cancer. There's been about 25 done, mostly at Baylor. And these are done for women who struggle with infertility for good medical reasons. But now there's a movement within the American Medical Association to say, let's do this in biologic men or biologic men who identify as women. If you remember, uh, for decades, doctors have identified transgender people with chromosomal tests and clear-cut biologic features but now there's a movement where some doctors and the American Medical Association is saying people should be able to pick their gender change freely as a matter of personal choice that's why you can walk into a Planned Parenthood as a child and walk out with a bottle of hormones they believe it's the job of the medical profession to simply affirm what you want to do how much do these surgeries cost the taxpayers it's about a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars the uterus is transplanted from a living or cadaveric donor it is that the patient is then put on immunosuppression there's in vitro fertilization the baby is carried to term there's a c-section done at which time they also remove the uterus that was put in to avoid further immunosuppression huh. and that's how it's been done so does that mean biological men would be able to have children Medically, it's possible. The question is, should it be done? It is odd that the AMA is choosing to really focus on this activist position mm -hmm. rather than fund the important research we need in transgender medicine. What's the regret rate after transition surgery? What's the long-term complication rate of hormones? What's the suicide rate in people on hormones versus children who Are get long-term Are they not conducting caught? those studies? Those studies are not being done. Instead of funding those studies, they've chosen, chosen to take an activist position. And it's very hard to do research in this field, Ainsley, because the activists have run a lot of people out of town. A word about miracles. This is a massive subject. You claim with David Hume that miracles violate the laws of nature. Well, David Hume's a very curious person to quote on this topic, because David Hume didn't believe really in the laws of cause and effect on which laws of nature are founded. He didn't believe in causality, and he didn't appear to believe in the principle of induction. And so that he's not a very good authority to quote. Secondly, I do not think that miracles are violations of the laws of nature because the laws of nature describe what normally happens. God, who is the God of this universe and created it with its regularities, is perfectly at liberty to feed a new event into the universe. Just as C.S. Lewis makes a point, if I put $2 plus $2 in my desk tonight, $4. If I find in the morning there are, is $1, I don't say that the laws of arithmetic have been broken, I say the laws of Alabama have been broken. I think the book The God Delusion gives the game away in the dedication at the front of the book to Douglas Adams, where, where he says, isn't it enough to see that a garden is beautiful without having to believe that there are fairies at the bottom of it too? Now you do a brilliant job at getting rid of the fairies, though it must be said that most of them didn't believe in them anyway. But when you see the beauty of a garden, say, in New College in Oxford, do you believe there's no gardener or no owner? That its sublime beauty has come about from raw nature by pure chance? Of course not. For gardens are be to be distinguished from raw nature by the operation of intelligence. And what you're doing in your book, I think, is presenting us with an obviously full set of alternatives. Either we take gardens on their own or the garden plus fairies but they don't appear on their own. They have gardeners and owners, so does the universe. You say there's no evidence of God, and yet your very description of the universe as a garden bears witness that the evidence is all around you. I believe in God. I believe in the supernatural God who created the heavens and the earth. I believe in a God who holds the heavens and the earth in existence. I believe that on the basis of rational evidence, similar to the beliefs held by the founders of this house, 
who gave this university the motto, Dominus Illuminatio Mea. They saw no contradiction between faith in God and the utmost excellence in rational inquiry. And if I dare mention my alma mater of Cambridge in this holy place, I would remind you that on the door of the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge are written the words, Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. And as we look at the rise of science in the 16th and 17th centuries, Alfred North Whitehead and many others commented that men became scientific because they expected law in nature, and they expected law in nature because they believed in the lawgiver. Different steps. So the, the day before birth, the day before birth, they would they would kill the child inside, and then they would send the woman's body into labor. Yes. So she would birth the baby anyway. Yes. Wouldn't it make more sense for her to birth the baby alive at that point? Yes. She has to go to, through birth, but you think yes. legally she should be allowed to birth a I, dead baby that she chose I don't to kill? Think she should. I, not that I don't think that it. I don't think she should do that legally. Do you think legally she should be allowed? Out. Legally, she should have the right to her own body. That's like me telling you, I'm going to put a tattoo on your body whether you like it or not, right? I don't think a tattoo is the equivalent to a, a baby You're being starting born. to make me feel like this lady over here was calling you the predator now at this point, honestly. Well, I but would never advocate for legally allowing a woman to anyone. birth a dead baby that I she don't want killed. Anyone. I don't want anyone to do that, ever. I don't want anyone to feel Why like Why not? Why, n why don't you want women to commit an abortion? Every person's situation is different. You're saying that it's rare. You think all these different situations are very rare and extraordinary. They're not. Yeah. They're not. 97% of abortions of happen for elective reasons, not because of medical reasons, not because of deformities. That's that's about like 1% of the abortions done in the entire country. And that statistics come from the Gutmacher Institute, which is the research arm of Planned Parenthood. I just have an issue with You've given birth. I've given birth. I'm about to again. I prefer and I, I wonder. Into this world. Don't get me wrong. I do. Great. I don't want babies to somehow all of a sudden have this problem. But you also need to realize: Is it fair to tell a woman who maybe she was assaulted and she got pregnant, right? She decides I'm going to have this baby because that's the right thing to do. And then she starts trying to carry this baby, and it gets too emotional for her, and she says, "I can't do it." It is absolutely fair to say you cannot terminate that life inside of you at any point. Yes, I do believe that. Um, I am pro-life. I am carrying a child inside of me. It's not my body. This, this baby has a different body than mine. And I know what I did to conceive this child. I do too. So, I, 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 they were welcome yeah. here. It, it, I'm what is go ahead. I just want to take a minute. I'm sorry. And I want to let you know, I do not consent to having any of this put on any level of social media Why not? or anywhere. I'm done. Why I don't not? Think this is okay. If I answer that, you're just wanting me to put it on there. And I don't want to. Why I'm isn't this okay? To this. Because that lady was right. You're over here just trying to be a predator to people. You're over here trying to ask us because questions. Because I have a different opinion than you. You're asking us questions. And then if we don't say the same thing, you're like, I disagree. It's okay That's for me okay. to disagree, isn't and it? And you can disagree, but it doesn't mean that you switch around how people are saying things. I think every woman has the right to choose whether or not you she has a baby. You told me, and you told the camera, that you think it's okay the day before birth for a woman to inject a solution into her child to stop but its that's heart. that's not what I said. You're and saying that. you said it's okay to do that. You're saying We that. will re-roll the, the tape and say that you said it was okay for her to have the choice to do that. I think that... The mom needs to be able to decide, and I know that's a cop out to say that, but but should she legally be able to decide a day before birth? Yeah, you I don't am want not it to happen. To you putting any of my face or my information anywhere. I understand. Ever. I understand that you don't want that to happen. No, I don't consent. Okay. That's okay for you to not consent. Then don't put my stuff anywhere. I understand you don't want me to do that. Don't do it. I understand you don't want me to do it. Is this why you record for stupid like this?
this? I'm gonna say, ma'am. You guys are disgusting. She is. We know about her. I don't think it's disgusting to want children to uh, not be killed the day before their due date and uh, be delivered dead. That, that's what's disgusting. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to emphasize is true whether the blind faith is that of religious or secular people. But not all faith is by blind faith, because faith itself carries with it the ideas of belief, trust, commitment, and is therefore only as robust as the evidence for it. I can't speak authoritatively for other religions, but faith in the Christian sense is not blind. And indeed, I do not know a serious Christian who thinks it is. Indeed, as I read it, blind faith in idols and figments of the human imagination, in other words, delusional gods, is roundly condemned in the Bible. My faith in God and Christ as the Son of God is no delusion. It is rational and evidence-based. Part of the evidence is objective. Some of it comes from science. Some comes from history. And some is subjective, coming from experience. But the evidence is, is all important. I mean, Einstein's predictions fit in with, um, with uh, uh, observed fact and, they, and with a whole body of theory. Whereas we only need to use the word faith when there isn't any evidence. I presume you've got faith in your wife. Is there any evidence for that? On yes, which you base it? Yes, plenty of evidence. Um, mm. I... Tu sang